This episode is sponsored by Google Play with the help of Crash Bandicoot on the run. In a time when basically every game you buy has some sort of RPG in it, and the actual genre is dominated by massive open world games with sprawling storylines, take it back to basics with a series that's not afraid to give you the classic gameplay you want. Just playing Final Fantasy V again. Bravely Default 2. Discover the only RPG series whose title sounds like advice you'd get on a loan. As you dive into the deceptively titled third game from this format, the sequel to Bravely Second, that gets away from the controversial play the whole game multiple times strategy of the original and the characters that continued into the sequel, along with all their personality, for an extremely similar cast of bland do-gooders shaped like bobbleheads who you'll guide through a plot clearly written by an AI trained on SNES RPGs about an amnesiac collecting element-themed crystals with some royals they just met to prevent an apocalyptic world-ending crisis that no one else seems particularly interested in helping with in a storyline that you can safely button through while you think about literally anything else and gameplay that will regress you into your childhood like an adult eating a Lunchable. Mmm, that's a great Capri Sun, Mom. Quest across the mostly featureless overworld of standard fantasy biomes while you scamper away Dragon Quest style from the latest reskin of the game's handful of enemies, maniacally cutting grass along the way like Link at a landscaping convention until you make it to the next long corridor dungeon where you'll either grind your way past seemingly endless battles to reach your goal or cheekily juke them out until you make it to the boss and get your ass destroyed because you're underleveled and have to grind it out anyway then figure out the boss's literal one weakness and still spend 30 minutes chipping away at their massive health bar until you finally take them down and get to steal their powers Mega Man style. Then get ready to rinse and repeat because that's basically the entire game. Look, I like RPG combat as much as the next guy, but you gotta break it up a bit. I mean, come on, give me a snowboarding minigame or an opera house or anything. Slice into the meat of Bravely Default 2, The Combat which is basically standard Final Fantasy except for the series' trademark system that lets you take turns early or bank them for later on so you can chain multiple moves together for greater effects or in reality so you can take four turns with all your guys in basic battles and try to kill everything before they attack at least until you've had a chance to go crazy with a job system and stack some passive abilities turning your characters into min-max gods that can kill everything on screen just by attacking while also stealing their health and items and then storing them like Pokemon for later use, which turns normal fights into cakewalks and boss battles into competitions over who can get their unfair bullshit more often in a combat system that you'd better enjoy if you're going to play this game because it's literally 90% of it. Endless JRPG battles, a fun time for some, and endless purgatory for others. Such a duality is man. Uncover the other scraps of gameplay Bravely Default 2 tosses to you along your journey from the numerous side quests they made annoying to find for some reason that mostly just lead to extra fights and mini dungeons to the obligatory card game a strange combination of Triple Triad from FF8 and the actual game Othello that you'll be forced to play if you want one of the job classes or the sailing thing that lets you send your character out on expeditions while your switch is idle where you can accidentally break the game by collecting a bunch of stat boosting items for free none of which are particularly compelling but hey at least they don't involve hitting the attack command the hardest battle I fought in this game is trying to stay awake. So brave up three times and get ready to get countered in a traditional JRPG experience that doesn't reinvent the wheel but just brings out the same wheel. And if you just have to drown yourself in nostalgia, go replay FF7 like you were going to do for the 300th time anyway. Because why play something new when you can just play something you know you like repeatedly? Starring Jack and Sparrow Gloria Hole. Books keep out of Willie. Rolling in my sleep. Two winged angel. And maybe it's her. Maybe it's genocide. Default RPG 3, technically. You know, the voice acting is actually a big high point in the series, but did I really have to hear what this guy sounds like? <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. This episode is sponsored by Google Play. Download Crash Bandicoot on the run and discover more on Google Play now. In the magical land of unicorns, there's no need for clothing. I'm not broken, and I'm not alone. Life he, life ho, it isn't fair ho. 
in terms of life decisions. That was your last. I am a man of my own, ee-hee.